What's going on everyone? It's Ben from Wajo from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh! video and in this video I'm going to be going over a pretty fan favorite deck from Warrior Format which is Zombies or Dead Rat or whatever you want to call it. Basically it's using the power of Pyramid Turtle to bring out these Ryu Kokis which are big 2400 attack point zombie monsters that pair well in against a variety of things in the meta for instance BLS. This card can crash into that and pop it. Um, also there's Book of Life so they can bring back these zombie monsters Banish card from your opponent's graveyard, disrupts chaos strategies, things like that. So I think this deck is pretty fun. Now, there are a variety of ways you can build it. Uh, for instance, you could go more of a skill drain route because you're not really using effects too much. Like, you've got the rats uh, and the pyramid turtles which trigger engrave. You've got exiled force, which uh, attributes itself for cost and thus will still trigger its effect. And then the Ryukoki just sort of just big monsters here. Um, but because BLS is in the format and because Ryukoki's effect can have incidental use against that, uh, I chose to put the skill drains in the side for decks that aren't really playing BLS um, or decks that are just more like effect reliant. But um, I th definitely think you could change this deck up a bit uh, and put in the skill drains in the main. It's definitely a different way to go with it. It's just not the way that I went. So let's go through the card by card real quick for this deck. Basically, the main idea is that Ryu Koki is a big 2400 beater and you can get it out very easily by crashing in your rats to get out turtles to get out the Koki. Um, you can also get other zombie targets off the turtle. For instance, Vampire Lord could be a potential card you want to play. I didn't play it in the main because I felt like uh, most of the time this can get removed in ways that you know will not trigger its effect. So I didn't really think it was worth playing here. But uh, you can definitely play it if you are worried about effect removal. Um, you can also play Spirit Reaper, which I am playing in the main. Reaper is a great card. It can rip a card out of your opponent's hand, uh, which does come up a fair bit of the time. And you can bring it back with Book of Life, which can be very, very powerful. Um, for the other cards here, we've got a Magical Scientist because this card is insane. Very, very versatile. A lot of things you can do with it. Um, and also, if you manage to get this to stick for a turn, you can bring out a Fusion Monster to be that off for Koki. Uh, so that's pretty cool as well. We've got Injection Fairy Lily as well, which is another reason why I'm not really playing Skill Drain. I think Injection Fairy Lily is very, very, very powerful uh, in this format. And having Skill Drain up does shut this card off. If you do bring in Skill Drain, you just side this thing out. But I do think this card is worth playing uh, as a rat target there. We got the Exiled, as I mentioned before. It's easily searchable off rat. We got Breaker to deal with back row. Uh, we've got a Sinister Serpent here to pair with both our discard traps, which I'll get to in a second, and also our Tribe Infecting Virus, which we are playing in this deck. This card is just so, so good at just clearing up very gummy board states. Uh, so very, very vital to have in the deck, in my opinion. Uh, for these spells, we got Triple Book of Life. You could potentially cut this down to two, because when you do Brick on Book of Life's and you just don't have a zombie in grave, uh, it is pretty rough. Um, that being said, like, this is one of the main reasons to play the deck, because it gives the deck a level of recursion that a lot of other decks don't have. Uh, so I definitely think that, you know, playing three is not terrible. Uh, it's just, it's something that you might brick on, so be aware of that. Now, you could play something like Card of Safe Return to combo with your Book of Lives, um, but I felt that was a little bit too high rolly. I don't really think it does enough in the deck. So I did not choose to go that route, but it is something that you can do if you want to. Uh, next up, we got Change of Heart, Snatch Deal. Of course, these are just very powerful cards to take your opponent's monsters, get even more aggressive. We get a Confiscation or a part of their hand. We get Double Creature Swap to pair with our rats and our turtles. If you swap uh, your opponent into a rat or a turtle, and then you attack over it, then you get out a big monster that can go for even more game. So uh, I think Creature Swap is very, very good in this deck in most cases. We got Heavy Storm as well to deal with back row. Uh, we got Mirage of Nightmare plus the MST. Because we're playing Mirage, we are playing triple Raigeki Break here to deal with it. And I actually think Raigeki Break goes very well in this deck because basically if you draw into your Kokis and things like that, you can pitch them off break. Then you've got a target in Grave for Book of Life. And that can apply to your Turtles and Reaper as well. Uh, there are a lot of situations where you just want to pitch a zombie, get that in Grave for your book. Uh, and, you know, potentially pop the Mirage, but potentially just pop a powerful card your opponent controls. We do have MST for the Mirage as well, though. We got Painful Choice here. This can set up your grave with a bunch of zombies for Book of Life. It can also really do a lot. Painful Choice is one of the most broken cards in the game at this point, um, but it is very, very tough to use, so that is good to know. Um, but it is very versatile. Next up, we got Pot of Greed to draw deeper into our deck. We got Premat to bring back more of our monsters. We got Snatch, as I mentioned before. We got Force of Sentry to rip apart our opponent's hand, just like with Confiscation. And we got an Upstart Goblin. Upstart Goblin is a bit iffy here, um, because we are an aggro deck, so we want to beat down our opponent as much as possible. Uh, but given that things like Book of Life can break a bit, I decided to include the Upstart Goblin, uh, to draw deeper into our combo. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think you'd cut this in the future, but... 
I like it here for now um, as, as the 40th card, but this could definitely be replaced with something else. Uh, we got Call of the Haunted here to bring back our monsters. We got Triple Right Geki Break, as I mentioned, very powerful in this deck. We got Ring of Destruction to pop monsters and deal that last bit of damage to our opponent's life points. Uh, we got Triple Sakuretsu Armor to deal with attacking monsters. And lastly, we got ATT to clear the board. For the side deck, we've got uh, Triple Asura Priest and Double Wangyu for guilt control decks. I think, honestly, I'd cut the Wangyu in the future. Asura Priest is generally all you need, and Wangyu does conflict with your rats because if they attack with a rat, what you'd want to go into is a turtle, but turtle will be popped by Wanghu. Now, if you've got turtle already established on field, then that isn't really as big of an issue because turtle can just bring out a Koki, but it can come up a fair amount of the time. So I don't really think the Wanghus here are the best. Uh, we got the triple, uh, the third Koki there in case we want to bring it in. We got Vampire Lord as well. So if we want to bring in more zombie targets, we can. We got double knock for more flip focus strategies. We've got triple scapegoat um, for more... I, I mean, I guess aggressive strategies like zombies. Um, it, it also pairs very well with creature swap too. Uh, and lastly, we got the triple skill drain for effect based strategies, as I mentioned. Uh, the fusion deck is basically just a variety of the toolbox fusions that you'd go into. So we got double dark Balter here. We got uh, triple dark blade the dragon knight. We got double fiend skull dragon. We've actually got a copy of fusionist here, and this may seem weird as just a 900 attack point fusion monster. This is actually the fusion monster besides Thousand Eyes Restrict that has the lowest attack in the format. Uh, and the reason why you might use this is because if you've got Creature Swap plus Scientist, uh, you can Scientist out a Fusionist and then Creature Swap it to your opponent. That won't often come up. Uh, and generally, if you do do that sort of thing, you're probably going for like a Reaper on the Nightmare play instead because this has 800 attack. But Fusionist can be destroyed by Battle Roll while Reaper can't. Um, so, you know, it is good to consider. But uh, we got Ojama King here as well. I guess this is another monster you can bring out uh, and give your opponent, but Ojama King locks up your board. So, you know, might not be the best over a fusionist. Um, but we've got Ryu Sentry as well, and also the Thousand Ender Tricks. Now, in this format, we've got an unlimited fusion deck, so you can just sort of proxy in whatever cards are not included here that you might need. Um, but, you know, I think this is a good sort of sampling of the toolbox fusion monsters that are available in this format. But that's going to do it for the deck breakdown. Uh, let's dive into some games and actually see how the deck does. Okay, we got our first game against Rago Dragger here, a frequent guest on the channel. Always a pleasure to have them on. Uh, they're going to win the Rock, Paper, Scissors there, and uh, they are going to go first. So uh, we are going to draw a pretty good hand here, all things considered. Um, and they're going to go for Forceful to rip it apart. So they're going to take the Pyramid Turtle, shut off our Book of Life. Um, also prevent us from having a good pitch for right Giggy Break, so that is very good there. Um, and then they are going to just pass back to us. Okay, that's a pretty slow start. Uh, we draw pre-mount, which isn't really going to be the best here. So we just go for upstart. Draw into Serpent, which is a very good pitch off Raigeki Break. So we'll just set the break pass back to our opponent. They're just going to pass back to us. We draw Creature Swap, which pairs very well with the Serpent here. Um, and we're just going to pass back to them. They are going to just set one, set another, pass back to us. We draw Lily, which is honestly pretty good. Um, we are going to summon out the Lily to play around TT here, and then we're going to go for the break. This is a bit awkward. We could have gone for the break first in, like, standby to get back the Serpent to then have another target to discard with Raigeki Break later, but I really did want to play around TT. Maybe that shouldn't have been the move because TT is a one-of, so not really the best thing to play around. Um, but, you know, it is what I did anyways. We're going to set the break here because we still got okay options to pitch here if we need to. They go for Storm, and we don't need to break that. Um, they're going to go for Premat here to bring back the Faith and then go into a Thousand Eyes off a meta. So it looks like they're playing some form of goat control. They're then going to tribute off for this Parshath here, get in for 19 and draw cards. That's a pretty good turn for them. They're going to go for meta here and bring back a Balter. So that's going to be pretty good for them. Uh, we draw a Book of Life here, um, which is a little bit rough because we don't have any zombies in Grave. Uh, now there's a couple different options here, but Balter shuts out a lot of them because it can negate normal spells. So what we have to do here is we have to just go for Premat, try and bring back the Lily and attack over the Balter. So if that doesn't go through, uh, then we're kind of in a really bad spot because we don't want to set the Serpent because Balter will negate its effect. Uh, but luckily that does indeed go through, so we will deal 14 to our opponent. We're at a very risky spot because we're at 1300 here. So we are just going to set the book, set the Serpent there. And they're going to go for Smashing Ground here, getting rid of our Lily. And then setting one passing back to us, we draw MST here, which is pretty good. We're going to set that pass back to our opponent. And they're going to go for Confi here, ripping apart our hand a little bit, taking the Creature Swap, because um, they know the set is Serpent. And then they're going to pass back to us. We draw Change, which we're not going to use right now. Uh, we're just playing a bit slow, because we flip up Serpent, attack in, and they bring out something like Breaker, then they just win the game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we draw Exiled Force, though, so that is pretty decent. We're going to bring that out, attack in for 1,000, uh, because I don't really think there's uh, many good options that they can bring out that gets over Exiled Force and kills us here. I guess they've got a Light and Dark Engrave, so, like, Chaos Orc would do it. So maybe I shouldn't have done this. Maybe this is a bit greedy. 
Um, but we'll see what they do. They're going to set one pass back to us. We've got an MST for the new set. It's just an enemy controller. And we draw a rat, so we're just going to summon out that rat. If they've got TT, they've got TT, but otherwise this is lethal. So we're just going to attack in for lethal damage. And it looks like the set was just ring. Uh, so actually that will uh, cause the game to go to a draw here. So very interesting. You don't often see draws happen, but ring will make it into a draw. So uh, I don't really think there was a way we could have avoided that in that scenario. Um, I, I think we just had to do what we were doing there. Um, but unfortunately it did not work out for us. So we're going to go into this game too now, uh, and see what we do. Uh, we draw, okay. This is a pretty decent hand to start out with. Um, our opponent is going to set one, then go for tribe, set another pass back to us. We draw a Saku, which is pretty good. That can deal with the tribe, but we're just going to bring out this Exile Force to deal with the tribe that way. Then we're going to set the Break and the Saku pass back to our opponent. I feel like they don't have Heavy because they set two back row there. And also Break can pitch a Reaper if we want to. They're going to attack in for 17 here. We just Saku that because, you know, it's kind of annoying uh, if they do do that. And uh, they're going to go for Confi, rip the change of heart out of our hand, which I think is a very, very good play on their part. We draw Break, which is pretty good, but we're just going to bring out this Reaper here. Attack directly for 300. And they've got Ring for the Reaper. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, that because they are in GOAT control, I sided in to Assure Priest, and I took out the swaps um, because swaps play badly with the uh, Scapegoat. I also took out uh, Lily. Lily might not have been the right choice to take out there, um, but I figured it's a bit less valuable against a GOAT control deck. Um, but I think it, it does have its merits. So I think, honestly, I should have probably kept the Lily in. Um, but our opponent is going to... Uh, so they're going to ring our Reaper and then set two pass back to us. We draw Book of Life here. Uh, so we're just going to bring out this breaker here. They've got Regeki break to deal with that, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, we could break their set, but I don't really feel the need to. Uh, so we're just going to pass back to them. Uh, and they flew up Fiber Jar, so that's going to be really bad for us. We were actually in a really good spot here, I think, overall, if they hadn't flipped up Fiber Jar. So maybe the break would have been the right move. Uh, but I had to read that it was something like Moth, and Moth isn't really the best, uh, with the spell they had in Grave. So I didn't really think it was worth doing. So... Uh, we get a little bit punished for this, but ultimately it's not the worst thing in the world. We're still relatively even life points, and, uh, you know, it's, I don't think this is too bad. It's just kind of awkward against our deck, because we do want the setup with a zombie engraved to make our books live. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, that is how it goes sometimes. So everything will get shuffled back into the deck here. We'll draw five, and uh, that's a pretty good hand, honestly. So uh, I'm not too upset with that fiber jar. Uh, and they're going to think about this, and they're going to summon a sure priest, get in for 17 here. Uh, so that's going to go through kind of unfortunate. They're going to set one pass back to us and, uh, we have a pretty good opener here. Uh, we could go for rat, um, to keep the reaper in hand. It's a good right kicky break pitch, but I feel like just trying to get in for a hand rip is pretty good. They're going to go for enemy controller, which will deal with the reaper, unfortunately. So we'll set a TT and a Saku. They've got heavy. They've got heavy. Uh, just is what it is, but they're just going to set two pass back to us. We draw a heavy of our own, so that's kind of dead at this point. We're going to bring out this rat, go for change on the set. It's just a spy. We don't have any spies in deck. Um, so we'll attack in for 2,600 here. Uh, honestly, pretty good. Um, spy will wall us up for a little bit, which is kind of unfortunate, but we get rat to give us access into uh, Koki if we want it. They're going to bring out a sure priest and just attack into our rat. We are perfectly fine with that because this gets out uh, Turtle, uh, which can then get out Koki. So... I feel very good about that. They're going to attack into the turtle. We bring out the Koki here. Um, and they're going to go for Snatch on our Koki. That is very worrying. Uh, and then they're going to meta our Koki away and bring out a Senshi. So maybe I should have set the break instead of setting the TT and the Saku. Because now our TT and Saku are kind of shut off here. And we could have gone for break on the Snatch. And they're going to go for Confi to top it all off. Pitching the break there. Um, and this is a very, very rough spot for us. Uh, not much we can really draw to get us out of it, but Rat is one of the things that will get us out of it, potentially. I could have just summoned out Rat, attacked into the Senshi, and gone for Koki that way. Uh, however, I didn't want to play into Saku, because if it's Saku in the back row, then we basically lose the game, because we lose 4,900 light points, which is very, very bad. Um, so I chose to do this instead. I figured this still gets us into it. They go for heavy there, and it was just a meta, so maybe I should have just gone for the rat into the sentry. But uh, I think, like, I think we did what we did, uh, and I think it was the good play overall, given what we knew. Um, and we can bring out a Koki here. We know the hand is a sure priest plus one unknown, and they're just going to pass back to us. So I feel very good about this. We also have Book of Life to bring back our other Koki, so that way we can clear up the board here. We banish the spy because it's the only monster in grave. Um, and now we attack in for uh, a total of 900 life points, which isn't much, but clearing the board like that is very good. Now, they don't have a light and dark here as well because uh, they've just got an earth and a light. So that's very nice in case they drew a chaos monster. Uh, and they're just going to pass back to us. 
they set one. Uh, we draw another Book of Life, so we could go for that. But there's lethal on board, so I figure I might as well hold the Book of Life. And we're going to attack in. It was just a Wang Hu set, so that will be the end of the game there. So, uh, very good game too for us. Uh, I think it worked out very well. And, uh, I mean, we did get kind of lucky pulling the rat off the top, but we've got many, many ways into our Kokis. So I don't really think it was the most lucky thing in the world. Like this deck is sort of built to do that combo. So I think it worked out in the end. Um, but this is a pretty good opener from us. Our opponent is going to fire a forceful to rip it apart a little bit. They're going to send back the break. And, uh, I, I think it's still a good hand. Um, go for painful though. It's going to be pretty rough for us. They're going to pitch a bunch of good ones here, sending Devil Moth, uh, Change, uh, Compi, and Pot, which is kind of rough. Um, we can't give them the Moth, as that gets them back anything, but we can give them the Change, because I feel comfortable just bringing out a Shura Priest, uh, and, you know, letting it be changed if they want to. I could also bring out Scientist here now that, um, I got it, because changing a Scientist isn't really the best thing in the world, since the monsters can't attack directly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring out Scientist, and I'm going to bring out a Fiend Skull Dragon, um... I figure this is best in case they've got a spy set. The only case where this get punished over bringing out Balter is if they've got Serpent set. Um, but that's a one of Spy is a three of, so I figure this is better to do. Um, they've got a Spear Reaper there, which is actually kind of worrying for us. So actually, we're going to bring out this Thousand Eyes, suck up the Reaper, and uh, then set this Saku pass back to them. Uh, so I got a bit greedy. I guess instead of the Fiend Skull, I could have gone for a Thousand Eyes Restrict if I was playing around um, it not being Serpent. Um, but I wanted to get in that 300 damage. Um, but I, I guess it was a bit too greedy for me. They're going to smash the scientist there, set one pass back to us. Uh, we draw another Surprise, so we're just going to bring out this one. They know about it already, so we might as well just hit in. And this way they can't change of heart it, so I feel good about that. Uh, they're going to think about this, and they are going to set another pass back to us. Uh, I'm sure Priest, I think, is just a very good way to just keep up pressure here. We're going to bring that out, attack in. We could also be bringing out Reaper here. Um, just trying to bait out like a scapegoat or something like that. And also they change part of the Reaper that pops that. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but I want the good, um, pitch off the Reaper. They're going to go for scapegoat here, bring out four tokens, which means that they might be going into a thousand eyes restrict soon, uh, which is a little bit worrying, but also if they're using thousand eyes restrict and they're just bringing it out to stall, then I'm okay with that. So they're going to go for a meta here, bringing out the thousand eyes in defense, passing back to us. We draw a Pyramid Turtle, and we're going to think about exactly what to do here. We're going to bring out the Assure Priest, and we're going to go for Break. And we're actually going to pitch the other Assure Priest. I think this was a mistake. I think I should have pitched the Turtle or the Reaper in case we drew a Book of Life. Uh, I think that would have been better. Um, but, you know, I think the other uh, Priest in our hand isn't really going to be doing much. So I think it's also fine to pitch that. Um, but I do think that this was a slight misplay here. Uh, we draw Call of the Haunted, so, you know, we get even more punished for a bit of a misplay there. Uh, and we're going to bring out this uh, Breaker there, popping the set. And now we're going to attack in to the set of theirs. It is a uh, spy, which is going to be a bit annoying for us. And so we're just going to set the call to haunted path back to them. We can call back our uh, magical scientists to deal with those spies, although it's a little bit awkward because then we drop down really low. And they're bringing out a BLS. That is <laughs> very worrying for us. They're going to banish the um, breaker there, which is pretty rough. And then they're going to uh, bring out a Mirage set to pass back to us. They're going to draw off Mirage, which is pretty good for them. And we're going to bring out this call. I think I could have brought out call in the end phase of their last turn. Then I could have also switched the scientist to defense this turn to sort of wall up a little bit more. Um, so that was a bit of a misplay on my part. But uh, I, I still go for it here. And luckily it does go through. Um, and we're going to prio bring out a thousand eyes restrict. So now we can suck up that BLS there and attack over one of their spies. And then main two, we're just going to set this turtle and pass back to our opponent. We could have also brought out another uh, Restrict to suck up the other Spy there, um, but I figured we can just clear the Spy next turn, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, we are going to uh, pick one for them to keep out of that Mirage, and they're going to pitch four good ones. They're going to change of heart our Scientist, which is kind of rough, and then they're going to go into a Thousand Eyes Restrict to suck up our set. Ultimately, that's pretty fine because it got rid of the change of heart, so I feel okay about that. We get our Scientist back here, and we're still in a good spot, I think. We draw a Book of Life, which is pretty good. We can um, book back one of our monsters, banish one from their grave, so that's pretty good as well. Um, we're going to think about this a bit because we're trying to figure out if we actually have a way to get game. I don't think I have a way to get game. I can bring out like a Dark Blade, the Dragon Knight, to get over the spy, and then I can bring out a Shura Priest for 17 plus 3, so that's 2,000. Then I can bring out a Turtle as well with Book of Life uh, to get in for 3,200 total, but that's not quite game, so not really worth going for. 
Um, so we're going to just uh, go for Book of Life there. Or, or at least it's not worth bringing out a Senshi to stop uh, anything else they might have there. So we're going to um, then bring out a Scientist here. Bring out the Dark Blade. And then we're going to debate which other one we bring out. We bring out the Spear Reaper here to rip a card out of their hand. Um, I think if I do this, I honestly do want to just go for Senshi to shut off their traps. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It's a bit awkward here. Uh, we do get in for that. We get in for... Or we don't get in for the Reaper because they've got a scapegoat in the back row. So it's quite unfortunate. Uh, we can still clear three of those tokens there. Um, and then I could have gone for Scientist hitting into the last token and then gone for Thousand Eyes to get rid of the last one. Um, that might have been a better thing to do uh, because they've only used up one meta, so they might have a meta in hand. So I think, honestly, that probably would have been the best move there. But uh, as is, I don't do that. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, I figured the last card in hand being meta is kind of, uh, you know, unlikely, but it looks like they already had meta set on field, so it didn't matter anyways. They go for uh, meta on Serpent, and yeah, even if we had cleared those two tokens, it wouldn't matter. They're going to meta away our... Uh, they're actually not going to choose Turtle. They're going to choose the Scientist, because Scientist can clear the Restrict, and then they're just going to pass back to us, because they do know about these Saku, I believe. So uh, this is still a good board uh, for them to have, so it's not really the... Uh, Worst thing in the world for them not to attack here. They're going to go, or we're going to go for Coffee to get a peek at their hand. Try and rip out an MST if they drew it. Uh, looks like they didn't draw MST, but they did draw Raigeki Break. So we're going to pitch that Raigeki Break there. Um, I could have also just let the Raigeki Break stay in hand, but if they keep that, um, then, you know, they've got a way to shut off Mirage. So I don't want them to have that. Uh, I mean, they might just lose all cards in their hand anyways, so it might not matter, but if they draw MST... And that would be awkward. But it looks like they don't draw that, so they just pitch all four. They're going to switch to the Restricted Defense, pass back to us. We've got break here. Um, so we can just set the break, and we'll pass back to them. Uh, they're going to MST the Mirage there. And I feel like, honestly, we could potentially just, you know, um, wait out this Restrict. They're going to go for Breaker and po uh, pop the Sakuretsu there. Then they're going to book down the Restrict. So maybe if I had gone for break on the breaker, uh, pitching in the Sarah Priest, before they actually managed to pop the Sack Red Suit, that would be a bit better for us, but uh, I don't know. They're going to go for the um, Restrict, sucking up the Pyramid Turtle, and we're actually going to go for a break on that uh, to keep the turtle online because we've got Turtle crashing into Breaker to bring out Koki. So I figured that's a pretty good line. They're going to attack in for 13, and we're in a pretty risky spot here. Um, we draw a change of heart, so that's pretty good, but unfortunately we can't quite go for lethal damage yet. Uh, because we do need the Breaker on their side of the field. So we attack in uh, to the Breaker. And we could have also brought out like a Sure Priest here. Uh, to try and uh, clear up their entire uh, back row there. But I figure that they've still got a TT left in deck. It's very likely that the set is TT. So I don't want to play into the TT. So I'm just going to, you know, bring a Koki. Switch the Reaper to Defense. Pass back to them. Um, they are going to think for a bit. And they're going to decide to set one pass back to us. We draw Exiled Force, which is pretty decent, but we're going to go for Change of Heart on the set. Uh, flip it up, because we're playing around TT, and that will indeed be the TT there. So even though it was Serpent, I think we had to go for that, because uh, if they flipped up Serpent on their turn, they could have popped the entire board and then summoned out a monster to attack in. So uh, we'll lose all of our monsters here. Main one, we're going to go and summon out this Exiled Force, attack indirectly, because we summoned out a Sure Priest, and they've got a monster that can attack indirectly. Uh, then we just lose the game. So they're going to bring out a Souk here uh, and attack over the Exiled Force, uh, getting rid of that, setting one, passing back to us. And we draw Ring of Destruction, so that's pretty good. Uh, we have a couple options here. Um, we could just bring out a Sure Priest and attack in for 17. They're down to 100. We got Ring for later if they bring out any monster. Um, but again, that leaves us vulnerable in case they've got a um, like monster off the top or something. I, I was trying to think about what they could have left. And I didn't realize that they actually have a Tribe Infecting Virus left, so I definitely think this was the correct play here, um, because Tribe coming down would just kill us if they've got Heavy, which, you know, they definitely have Heavy as well. Um, so, I think this, this is a pretty, um, you know, good board here to have. Uh, our opponent's going to go for Heavy, though, and they're going to Chain Break to that. Oh, yeah, and that will do it. Yeah, because they pitch the Souk, uh, pop our Sure Priest, and yeah, they'll be able to bring out Tribe for 1600 no cards left in deck, down to the wire, and attack in for 1600 So, I definitely could have played that a little bit differently. Maybe I would have won uh, if I had done things differently there. Maybe leaving them the tribe was the best play to do. Um, but I would have been bleeding out 900 a turn because they'd attack in a Reaper every turn. I couldn't switch the Reaper, so, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it was a bit tricky. Um, 
but yeah, still very, very good games there. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going into game four. So very exciting. Uh, down to the wire with this game. And we are going to draw pretty well for our opener. Uh, we don't draw any hand rips or anything, so that's unfortunate. But we do have this rat and a break there. So we're going to set the rat, set the break, pass back to our opponent. Uh, they're going to go for change on the rat. That's fine. They're going to meta away the rat uh, to bring out a dark fire dragon. Dark fire dragon we don't really care about. They're going to attack in for 1500 here. Uh, and that will go through. And then they're going to fire a Comfy. That's a bit unfortunate because they're going to take the other rat. We really wanted the rat there to crash into the dark fire, but uh, it didn't quite work out there. So uh, they are going to set two, pass back to us. Uh, we do have a Sure Priest to get over the dark fire, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to attack over the dark fire dragon there uh, for 200. Then we're going to attack over the set, or at least attempt to, but it's a spy, so we won't quite be able to attack over it. So they're going to bring out the spy. Uh, we're going to set a Saku, pass back to our opponent. And uh, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw another Book of Life. We don't have any zombies online because our rats were both dealt with. Uh, and we're just going to set this Assure Priest pass back to them. Because Assure Priest can't get over their stuff. And we've got ways to protect the Assure Priest if they try to attack over it. They're going to swap. And that works out very well for us. Because now we can get back our Assure Priest. Get a um, Spy here. So it's very, very good. So we're just going to uh, attack the Spy into the Assure Priest. Then we're going to set the Reaper here. I think this was maybe a bit of a mistake. I think I probably should have just uh, kept the Reaper in hand for the break. And then paired it with um, the Book of Life there. So that was a misplay on our part, I think. Uh, but we draw another Assure Priest so we can just uh, sort of go for a break, you know, pitching an Assure Priest. But they're going to TT the board away on the summon of the Assure Priest. So now we can bring out this Reaper. Uh, they're going to go for a Call the Haunter here to bring back the Spy that we're targeting with Book of Life. So actually, we are just going to go for uh, a break on the uh, Call to prevent that from coming out. And then we'll be able to bring out this Reaper and attack. Hopefully get in for damage and rip that last card in their hand. They've got break though. So that will pop the Reaper. And unfortunately we pitched our other Book of Life. Maybe I should have uh, pitched the Assure Priest instead. Just to keep the Reaper online. Um, but I figured like if they did have a way to remove it. They'd probably be down to no cards anyways. And then Reaper isn't really the best there. So uh, I figured this is ultimately fine. Probably just going to set one pass back to us. We draw Koki here. Uh, we're just going to bring out Assure Priest. Attack over the set. And it is a Serpent. So now we get back that Assure Priest to hand. They are going to... Add back that Sinister Serpent there. And then they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Turtle, so that's pretty good. We can bring out Turtle, attack over the Serpent there. And now we're going to pass back to them. Uh, they're going to add back the Serpent there. And now they're going to set one. Go for Smashing on our Turtle. Pass back to us. We draw another Assure Priest. So we're going to actually set the Assure Priest, having to read that the set is a Sinister Serpent there. Uh, and then we can tribute off that Assure Priest next turn for Koki. Uh, they're going to pass back to us here. Uh, we're going to tribute off that Assure Priest for the Koki. Attack in to their set. Pass back to them. Uh, they're going to add back that Serpent yet again. Serpent's a very, very good card. Uh, they're going to set two pass back to us. We draw a Serpent here. We bring out this Assure Priest. Attack over the set, which we have the read of the Serpent uh, with the Assure Priest. And then we're going to attack in directly for 24. And we got them on a bit of a clock here. So I feel pretty good about this. Uh, they're going to add back that Serpent there. Then they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Call the Haunted, so we're getting even more of a clock on them. We go for the Assure Priest here, attack over their set. And it is Fiber Jar this time, so that will shuffle everything back into the deck, unfortunately. Uh, we have banished their one of their spies, so that's kind of nice. Um, but, you know, I think we're still in a good spot because they're at 4400, we're at 6200. We have sort of the first chance to do anything. Uh, so we draw into like a hand rip or something, and that's pretty good. We can set back row. Um, so I figure this is pretty good for us, uh, ultimately. So everything we got shoveled back into the deck here. Uh, and let's just hope we get a pretty good uh, opening hand. But yeah, if that hadn't been the Fiber Jar, I think we would have been in a really good spot here with the Call, with the Snatch, you know, etc. There's a lot of good stuff we could have done there. Uh, this is a pretty good opener. We can set the Ring. Uh, we might have wanted to set the Break instead to turn on Book of Life right away. Uh, but I figure Ring is still a good option. Uh, they go for Pot here, draw two. And now they're going to set one, set another, set another, and go for Mirage, pass back to us. And now we're in kind of an awkward spot because if we had had break, then we could have uh, popped their set and gone for like turtle and stuff. Um, so I think I misplayed there. We're going to set three, pass back to our opponent. And then uh, in standby after they resolve the Mirage. Um, so they're going to pitch a Faith to pop the Mirage. That just affirms to me that the set is, um, is, the, um, is another Faith. And so we're just going to Break that, get rid of the faith there, pitching a turtle. And now they're going to go for a painful here, pitching five. And uh, those are five pretty good ones. Uh, we're going to give them a Parshath here. Um, I figure giving them Parshath is pretty good. They're going to go for a breaker. We're going to ring that breaker, dealing 1,600 to each of us. And then they're going to pass back to us. I feel pretty good about this. 
Uh, we could just try and go for uh, almost lethal, like getting in for 2400 with the other turtle, uh, bringing up Book of Life as well. Uh, because they do have a Light and Dark Engrave as well, so it'd be good to deprive them of a Dark. Uh, but I'm just going to get in for 12. I'm going to save the book for if they do bring out like a BLS, uh, then I can book back one of the turtles, attack in to bring out Koki and crash with that. Um, it's a bit awkward, but I think it's fine. Um, they're going to set to pass back to us. We draw a Sure Priest here. So I think this should maybe be the end of the game. We're going to go for a Sure Priest here um, because I'm just going to attack in with Turtle. I don't really think there's much that walls up against this and that wouldn't wall up against a Sure Priest. So we're just trying to go for lethal here. Unfortunately for us, it is another Fiber Jar and we've normal summoned again. So it's quite unfortunate. Uh, also, as a note, if we had gone for Break instead of Ring before, uh, then we would have been able to get in for 1,200 damage more, and then our opponent would be at 400, which is a much riskier spot for them to be in after a Jar. Um, so I, I think it definitely was a misplay uh, to not just set uh, Break, because we had the good discard fodder in hand for it. So, um, But what can you do? Uh, it is what it is. And uh, I think it ultimately worked out okay, because we do also have this coffee now. We've got pot as well, so we've got a lot of stuff to do here. So we go for coffee here. Uh, taking a peek at their hand, we see they've got Tribe, Magician of Faith, Meta, MST, and Magician of Faith. Um, the awkward thing about this hand is if I send one of the spells, they just get back with Moth. Um, but I, I don't know. It, it's, it's just really awkward. Um, I could also send the Tribe... Because Tribe is a very good card. Tribe might honestly be the pick here because Tribe can shut off their Thousand Eyes Restrictive if they bring it out of the meta. So Tribe might be the way to go. But instead, I just bring out or I get rid of the MST because I'm hoping that they'll commit the Tribe into a Sakuretsu armor. Um, not the best thing in the world, but like, I don't know. I don't really know what to do here. We're just going to set a Saku here. Pass back to them. They set a Moth, set another pass back to us. We draw a Serap Priest, which won't really be the best here. We're just going to set a Rat. We could have set the Serpent as well, because we figure they're probably going to go into a Thousand Eyes here and suck up our set. Uh, but they're going to go for Breaker, actually. Pop the set there, which is a Saku. Then they're going to bring back the MST there with the Faith. Uh, go for Meta on the Faith. Bring out a Restrict here and sucking up our set. So if we had set Serpent, then that would have been a much better uh, pick for us to get back. Um... But as is, that won't quite happen. We set another rat here. Again, we could have set the um, the Serpent. But I'm afraid that they'll go into, like, uh, Tribe, pop both the Breaker and the Restrict, attack into our set. Um, I get Serpent also is resilient against that. So I probably should have set Serpent here either way. Um, but they're going to MST their set, suck up the um, rat with that. Then they go for Forceful, taking the change. And, uh, yeah, if I'd used a Serpent here, then we would have had a Rat for later, so it would have been a lot better for us. But as we draw a Book of Life, which will not be good for us, we set the third Rat and, you know, pass back to our opponent. Again, I think this is not the best move. I think I should probably set Serpents here. Um, but, yeah, they can't flip up the Faith because of the Restrict on field. Um, so I feel fine about that. And then we're just going to set the Serpent finally, pass back to our opponent. They're going to Tribute for Demok here, which is going to be pretty rough. They're going to add back Forceful. Uh, now they can forceful us, send a card back, then flip up faith, forceful us again. Uh, so very, very interesting stuff they can do. They attack over our rat here, banish that. Then they're going to forceful away the change of heart. And they see a sure priest in hand, so they don't really need to grab back the um, forceful because that won't really affect things. They're going to instead meta into a restrict here and suck up our last card. Uh, it's just a serpent, so that's going to be fine by us. We draw breaks, so we're going to set that pass back to them. And they are going to pass back to us. We draw a Snatch Deal here. We actually have a couple options here. We could wait on the Snatch Deal um, just because they can't really attack because of the Restrict. However, the downside with that is that they do have Tribe in hand, so they can shut off their Restrict and their Dark Magician Chaos at any point. So, um, yeah, that's kind of rough for us. Uh, I could also just go for uh, Snatch Deal on the Democ, break the Restrict, uh, pitching the Assure Priest, and get in for game or try to. Um, it really depends on what their other set is. Which we haven't really received an indication that it's anything live. Although we haven't really been doing much attacking because they've had restricts up. So could definitely be live there. Um, definitely a, a very important part to um, think about. We go for the break on the restrict here. And then we go for the snatch on the democ. And we try to get in for game. Uh, unfortunately, they've got goat there. So that will not work. And uh, we'll have to banish a goat. Um, I mean, the good thing about this is next turn, they do have tribe to clear the democ. But they probably can't kill us here. Um, so they're going to go for Tribe. Well, Snatch will kill us here. So yeah, if they got Snatch, then uh, yeah, that will be the end of the game here. So um, yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't quite manage to bring it to the finish line here. Even if we had gotten them down to 400 life points in the end there, I don't think there was actually a way we could win against this sort of thing. Maybe we could have pitched the Tribe earlier um, to give us a bit more options. But even that was kind of awkward. 
So yeah, I don't, I don't really know how we were winning this game in the end here, but I definitely did misplay. And I think it's good to acknowledge, like, even if the misplays might not have been the ones that cost us the game, I think it's good to acknowledge that the misplays did happen. And uh, it's just a good way to sort of try and get better at the deck in general. But this wasn't the only game I played with the zombie dead rat deck. Uh, let's dive into the next games now. Okay, we got a game against Aratos here, a frequent guest on the channel. Always a pleasure to have them on. We are going to be winning the die roll, so we will indeed go first here. Uh, and we are going to draw a pretty good opener, all things considered. Um, we're just going to set Raigeki Break past. They may not seem that formidable, but the idea here is if they bring out a monster, we can pop it with Raigeki Break. Then we got Book of Life next turn to bring out Pyramid Turtle. So there's a lot of stuff we can do here. So I feel like this is actually a pretty intimidating board. Uh, they're going to bring out ADD Warrior Lady, try to attack in. We've got Break for that, so we'll pitch the turtle, pop that. And then they're just going to set one pass back to us. We draw Forceful Sentry as well, so we're just going to Forceful see what they've got to inform our line going forward. Looks like they've got a Dekoichi, a Meta, a Scapegoat, and a Meta. Um, so we're actually just going to send back the Scapegoat there. Um, because, you know, Scapegoat's annoying for us to get through. We're an aggro deck. We don't want to deal with Scapegoat tokens. And also, you know, if we send back one Meta, they've got another Meta. And we've got the Exile to deal with the Dekoichi. So uh, I feel like uh, sending back the Goat is the best thing to do there. And then we go for Book of Life, bring back a turtle, banishing that DD Warrior Lady. Now they don't have a light in Grave, so even if they get the Deco in Grave, uh, we don't have to worry about Chaos just yet. We're then going to set this uh, Red Geki Break Pass back to our opponent. They're going to set one, and then go for Meta, uh, trying to bring out a Thousand Eyes here. And we've got a couple different options here. We could potentially just uh, Red Geki Break the Thousand Eyes, pitching like Call of the Haunted. Then we still have Exiled Force for a Dekoichi. Um, we could also just let them suck up the turtle, then bring out Exiled Force next turn to pop both. And then we get Call Online to bring back the turtle or the Exiled, depending on which one we want to do uh, later on. But I want to go aggressive, so I just pitch the call uh, for the break here. Uh, and draw a change of heart, so that is pretty interesting. We're just going to attack indirectly for 12, uh, keep the Exiled in hand, pass back to our opponent there. Uh, they're going to add back the Sinister Serpent here, and then they're going to set one, go for another meta, uh, suck up the... Um, Suck up the uh, turtle there. Attack in for 12. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've still got the Exiled for that, so that's pretty good. So we can stop that. And we also have Confi here to deal with their hands. We're going to summon out Exiled. We're then going to Confi their hand away. Uh, and see, they've got double Deco. So, you know, uh, all they've got left is a Deco there. We're going to pass back to them. Uh, and they're going to set one pass back to us. And we draw Painful Choice, which is really, really good here. Uh, I think we should probably be able to wrap it up here. We're going to think about exactly what to do. We're just going to fire the Painful. And we're going to make it seem like we've got a Book of Life or something. So we're just going to send five zombies from deck to grave. Uh, the five remaining zombies we have left. And uh, we're hoping that they give us Ryukoki. And they do give us the Ryukoki there. So that's all according to plan. Uh, we get back the Ryukoki. And then we go for Change of Heart here. Taking control of the Dekoichi here, drawing a card. We draw Pot, so it, this sort of adds insult to injury. And then we just go for an upstart here. Uh, because it doesn't really change the clock too much. We're going to tribute off uh, for a Koki there. They've got a uh, TT there, so that's unfortunate. But we drew a pretty good hand here. We got Breaker, we got Swap. Uh, swap isn't going to be the best into a Serpent, but uh, you know, it is what it is. And we draw Book of Life, so that's actually really good as well. We can actually banish that Serpent later. We're going to bring up Breaker, pop the back row, it's just an MST. We'll set the uh, Book of Life in case it's a Morphing Jar or something. It looks like it's just the Serpent. We're now going to go for Book of Life, bring back the Koki, and banishing that Serpent. Uh, we're going to pass back to them, but this is a basically unwinnable uh, position for our opponent. Uh, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw TT here. We're just going to attack in for 4,000 damage. Um, but I don't think there's really much our opponent could do here. Uh, they're going to break our Koki, so that's something at least. Uh, but we can set TT, pass back to them. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a rat, so we can just summon rat, uh, swap the rat over to our opponent, and then attack in to the rat. Uh, then we get out a Lily here, uh, which can get in for 3,400, um, dropping them down to 1,400. And there's not really much our opponent could top deck here that wins them the game through this position, especially because now we have this faith. Um, but yeah, that's just going to be the end of the game. They drew break, which is not going to be useful to them at all here. Um, so we're going to go in to game two here, a pretty commanding win in game one. We bring in the priests again, sliding out these swaps and the lilies again. I think probably keeping the lilies is a good thing. Um, but you know, I'm experimenting with exactly how to side against these decks. They're going to open with a forceful, send back our forceful there. Uh, and then they're just going to pass back to us. So the fact that they're passing back to us means that I feel like they probably have, like, Tribute Monster in hand. I'm not sure if they're playing, like, Soul Exchange or Change of Hearts or things like that. Well, they're probably change, playing Change of Hearts or Snatch Shield, etc. But I don't want to turn those online. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to just bring out a Sure Priest, attack in for 17. And then I'm just going to set the TT pass back to our opponent. I feel like this is a threatening enough board state to have. 
they're just going to set one pass back up. You know, another sure breach. We could bring up breaker to pop the back row, um, but they know about the breaker, so I don't really want to play into that. We're just going to attack in for 17. It's ring, so we'll each take 17, but, you know, we've got another sure priest in hand to keep the pressure going. And they're going to pass back to us. We draw a Koki here. We're just going to bring out this Assure Priest attack in for 17. Uh, and we'll pass back to our opponent. They're going to draw here. And they're actually going to admit defeat. Um, so let's see what they've got in hand. Yeah, they had the change of heart. Uh, but yeah, they had um, Sork, you know, meta, swap. Break, I guess, could have done something. But it would have been a little bit awkward there. So either way, they were in a tough spot for sure. But yeah, if we had committed a monster like uh, Breaker or Rat, they could have gone for change the meta to brought out like Darkfire Dragon. It's not the best play in the world, but it is something. And then that potentially turns on their other plays. So I think the Assure Priest were definitely the right move. But yeah, they were probably not winning this game uh, given this hand here. Um, still, you know, I'm very happy with how the zombie deck did in this game. We actually played another match immediately following this. So let's dive into that now. Okay, we got our last match of the video against the Ratos here. We're diving in. Unfortunately, I can only get games against Goat Control for this, but uh, Goat Control is a very popular deck in the metagame right now. Uh, so you will likely be encountering that quite a bit. So uh, we open pretty okay here uh, until they fire Confi. That's going to be pretty rough for us. They send the turtle. We still have the pre map to bring that back if we really want to, but it's kind of awkward here. Uh, we draw Book of Life, so that's something to bring back the turtle as well. We're just going to set this TT pass back to our opponent here. They go for heavy on the TT. That's why we didn't set ring as well. Um, and they're going to go for Moth to bring back Confi. I figured it was Moth, but I didn't want to set like everything in hand because, again, heavy would really blow us out there. So I'm glad I didn't do that, even though it is still kind of rough that they get to Confi. Another card out of our hand, so they're going to Confi the pre-mat away. Uh, then they bring out Souk to flip down the Moth, and that's going to be very, very rough for us. Getting in for 11. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a heavy storm of our own. We're just going to set the heavy and the ring pass back to them. We want them to get back heavy off the moth, uh, which is why we do this, because we don't really care about losing this heavy, because they're just bringing back heavies anyways. And uh, we can use ring on the moth, so uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. They're going to flip up the moth there, and then they're going to add back that heavy, uh, which is just how we planned it. They're going to bring out Souk to try and set down that moth. We're just going to go for ring on the Souk, because uh, we really don't want them to pull off that combo again. And this also gives us a monster and grave for, uh, for us to binge for the Book of Life. So they're going to attack in with Souk here. And they're just going to pass back to us. We draw a rat here, which is pretty good. Uh, we're just going to heavy the board away. It's just a meta. And then we're going to try and get aggressive here, bringing out a Pyramid Turtle, banishing the uh, Magician of Faith in their grave, and then attacking in for 2,600. The reason we're getting aggressive is if they commit any monster to board, then we can crash into it with either one of these. We've also got Snap Steel to take control of their monsters. Uh, so I feel pretty good about this overall. The awkward thing is that, like, neither of these actually clears the Tsukiyomi, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but it is what it is, and uh, I figure I have to do this. Uh, they go for a meta on a rat here to bring out a Darkfire Dragon in defense mode, which will wall up against our Pyramid Turtle, which is pretty good. Uh, we could take control of the Darkfire Dragon with Snap Steel here uh, to get in for 2700, but they've got Heavy Swarm for that anyways, so I don't really feel like it's worth it. We're going to set the uh, Sakuretsu there, pass back to our opponent. They are going to go for Heavy on the Saku. Uh, getting rid of that, then they go for uh, Souk on the Dark Bear. Set that down, set another pass back to us. We draw Creature Swap, which is pretty good for later uh, if we actually draw into some other stuff. Uh, but as is, uh, I'm just going to pass back to our opponent. We draw Turtle, so actually this Creature Swap becomes very good now. We're going to switch the Turtle to attack. We're going to swap it to our opponent. They're going to give us the Dark Fire Dragon. Now we're going to attack in to our Turtle. So if this goes through, we actually get two Turtle Summons. So that's going to be very good for us. They go for Raigeki Break, though, on our Turtle, pitching a Tsukiyomi, passing back to us. They flip up a Koichi to draw another card here. Uh, but that's not the worst thing in the world for us. We can, like, snatch their Dekoichi attack into the turtle uh, and then bring out a Koki, and that might just be the end of the game. They're going to attack over the Darkfire Dragon with the Dekoichi there. Clear that away. And then they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Tribe, which is okay. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to bring out the Tribe, attack into the turtle here, uh, bring out a Koki here, and attack over the Dekoichi. We could have also, um, you know, Tribe pitch to get rid of Dekoichi and then attack Koki into the set. Um, but I didn't really feel like that was necessary, um, because I feel like Snatch is a better threat than um, just tribing away uh, their monster and then clearing their one remaining set monster. So, they're going to think about this for a bit. Um, definitely a very interesting spot to be in, for sure. Um, a bit of a threatening spot to be in as well. But uh, they're going to uh, ultimately decide, after a lot of things, because it is a very, very tricky spot to be in. Um, 
they're going to ultimately decide just to set one, uh, set the sciences apparently, go for meta here to bring out Thousand Eyes, suck up the Koki, and attack over the uh, Tribe Infecting Virus. So, uh, pretty good play. Uh, now it's a bit awkward for us because, you know, we've um, we got to deal with this Thousand Eyes some way. We're going to snatch it because, uh, at least this way, you know, we get over their set and we have potentially a uh, threatening monster on board. Although if they've got Serpent, it's going to be really bad for us. Um, but it is a. Uh, DD Warrior Lady. So they're going to let that go to Grave instead of banishing it. We go for Confi here in main two, get a peek at what they're working with, and we see why they did that. They've got a Chaos Orc. So we're going to send the Chaos Orc. Either card in their hand clears the Thousand Eyes, but to clear it with Tribe, you have to pitch the card that you draw. So I figure that sending the Sork is a little bit better here. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of the Sork there, and they're going, or we're going to pass back to them. They gain a Thousand. And they draw another Chaos Monster. They draw BLS here. So they will be able to banish the Thousand Eyes. And ultimately, they are going to put the uh, BLS in attack instead of defense. Because if we do draw a way to get into Koki here, uh, then we can just uh, attack the Koki in the defense position BLS and clear it that way. So I think this is the smart move. They bring out a Tribe here, attack in for 16. Uh, that will go through. We do have a couple draws off the top of our deck that make things a little bit difficult for our opponent. Uh, unfortunately, Break Iggy Break is not one of them. So we'll set that pass back to our opponent. And they'll just bring out a warrior lady attack. And they didn't even need to do that. But uh, our TT is gone. So they can do that without fear. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the end of the game. So very, very good stuff there. Um, very intense match for sure. I think it could have definitely gone either way there. Um, despite our opponent's strong start. Which does show how uh, resilient this deck can be when it gets into the late game. Because by the time you're in the late game, you've got zombies in grave most likely. So your book of lives are live. And it makes it very, very scary to be facing if you're the opponent. We're going to set a Reaper here, pass back to our opponent. They're going to bring out a DD Warrior Lady to clear that Reaper uh, that will indeed go through. We set the Reaper first as opposed to setting another monster here because we wanted to sort of uh, snatch whatever they, monster they brought out uh, or exiled it and then get in for a hand rip. But unfortunately, that did backfire for us because DD Warrior Lady on Reaper is really rough because we want a zombie in Grave ultimately. Uh, and they've also got Compi here so they can rip the Snatch Deal out of hand. So that's going to be pretty disappointing for us. Uh, we draw into a Scientist here, which is ultimately okay. We're going to set the Serpent, pass back to them. Uh, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Raigeki break here. So it's a bit tricky. We do go for the Exiled popping the set because we figured it's a flip monster. Let me set the break. We maybe should have gone for Koki here uh, and then attacked into the Dekoichi. And then we get the Serpent more in rotation for our break. But I feel like uh, given the power of a lot of flip monsters in their deck, we just want to do this. They bring out a breaker trying to pop our set. It is a uh, break, so we are just going to chain the break. We're ultimately going to pitch the Scientist here. Um, I think maybe I could have pitched the Koki instead because then it's online for like Book of Life stuff, but I want to summon up the Koki next turn. So, um, and just get aggressive, but I think this maybe was a bit of a mistake there. Uh, we tribute over the Serpent for the Koki attack in for 2400. They've got Saku for that. And, uh, they are going to summon out a Shining Angel here attack in for 14. Uh, they're going to set one pass back to us. We add back the Serpent in standby, which is very important because we do need to pop that Shining Angel with the Tribe, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, and then we attack in for 16 there. So, main two, we're just going to set one pass back to our opponent. They've got MST for the set. It's just a Saku there. And then they're going to banish a Light in the Dark for a Chaos Orc. So that's kind of unfortunate for us, but we do have the Rat here to, uh, just go in, uh, to that monster. They've got a Dark Blade the Dragon Knight here. Uh, though, so that's going to be very good for them, um, because they can attack in, banish a bunch of cards from Grave, and so we don't get our Serpent next turn, we also lose our Koki Axis for, uh, Book, and we also lose Scientist as well, so we draw Premat here, and that is, mm, this, this is going to be a bit tricky, because what we could do is we could summon out Rat, try and crash into the, uh, Dark Lim Dragon Knights, get into a, uh, Koki, and then hit over it, right, and then keeping our Premat online, but if they've got, like, uh, Sakura to Armor, then that's really bad for us because they can soccer the rat. And then we sort of have to pre-mat back the exiled in main two and go for that. They could also, instead of sakuing the rat, they could saku like the turtle when that comes in or the Koki when that comes in. Um, and then banish the exiled force out of grave as well. So I think what I actually have to do here, instead of going for the crashing plan, which would normally be the plan, we go for pre-mat here to bring back exiled preemptively. And uh, we just go for that popping the Dark Blade of the Dragon Knight. Then we bring out this rat attack in for 14. I still think this is ultimately a good spot to be in because most other things that they bring out here, we can crash the rat into and go for the Koki line that way. Uh, so I think it's ultimately fine. They go for Mirage here. They get to draw three. Quite unfortunate for us. Uh, we go for Upstart. This does uh, increase our clock a little bit. 
Um, so that's kind of unfortunate, but you know, I do think it's worth drawing the extra card. We set ATT here, pass back to them. They've got break for the rat, so they're just gonna use it. Uh, and now they're going to banish a light and a dark for a BLS here, and they're gonna use Pryo to banish the giant rat. We just go for TT here. Uh, we could have also potentially saved it for like when they're threatening lethal, uh, but I figured like from this position, they don't need to actually commit any more monsters to the board. They can just attack in every turn with BLS. They can't attack in this turn, of course, but, you know, next turn they can. So I figured it's just better to TT the board away. They're going to set two pass back to us. We draw a turtle here, so we'll bring that out, attack in for 1,200, or at least attempt to. Uh, they've got goat for that, so they'll be able to get three goat tokens out, uh, and then we're just going to pass back to them. Uh, they're going to go for a scientist here and then bring out a dark vulture, which will negate the turtle. Um, so they'll attack over the turtle for 800 and then 300 direct with the scientist. So it's not looking good for us. Uh, Balter will go back to deck. We draw a ring, so that's okay. Uh, we can ring the scientist, potentially ring whatever else they might have. We draw a break here, so we're just going to set that as well. Um, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw MST, so we're just going to keep that in hand for the break. They bring out a DD Warrior Lady here. They're going to attack in for 15. We could break it. We could also ring it. Uh, we have to spend a bit of time deciding which one to do. Um, I figure it's more likely that we'll drop lower in life points uh, sooner rather than later, so I figure it's better just to ring the uh, DD Warrior Lady as opposed to uh, breaking it, but maybe this was a mistake because we're at relatively even life points with our opponent at this point. So if we break the, um, the warrior lady, then, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think it's a bit tricky. I think either way, we're in a tough spot. So, uh, we drop our opponent down to 1100 though. We draw a Mirage Nightmare so we can bring that out, set the, uh, MST here. We could have also kept the MST in hand for the break in a worst case scenario, but I figure if the Mirage goes through, then we'll have cards in hand for the break anyways. So, I figured it's ultimately fine, uh, but they've got break for the Mirage anyway, so now we're in a really risky spot because we don't have that break online. They're going to bring out a Chaos Orc and uh, attack in directly for 23, so we do have this MST just to, you know, get rid of their set, and it was a Saku, but that's just going to be the end of the game. So if we'd get the MST in hand, we could have survived for a little bit longer, but I still think we were in a really rough position. We probably would not have won in the long term. Uh, yeah, so that was just a break. We do draw a wrap return there, but we're not winning through that, um, through what they've got here, so... Yeah, uh, very, very good games, though, um, with this deck. I think that, like, I definitely did misplay in some uh, parts of the games, and those misplays maybe could have been the difference between winning and losing. Uh, I think this deck is very tricky to play because you do need to sort of be thinking about a variety of things at once. You need to be setting up your graveyards with zombies to make your books of life live. You need to be uh, knowing when to go for the rat or the turtle into your opponent's monster. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this deck, and I think it's very, very fun and very, very good. I think it's definitely at least tier two. Uh, I don't think it's quite tier one because you do need to play the bricks like Koki's, and also occasionally your graveyard just isn't set up, which turns Book of Life into a brick as well. But I definitely think it does have potential, and it's very, very good to experiment with going forward. But that's going to do it for the video. I hope that you enjoyed, as always. Uh, if you enjoyed this sort of content, please do subscribe to the channel. We're at 1205 subscribers right now. It would be really nice to uh, climb up to 1300 soon. Uh, just keep climbing all the way up to 2K. Um, but yeah, so if you enjoy this content, I will release more of it coming soon. So definitely subscribe. Also, let me know what you think of the deck down below uh, in the comments. I look forward to discussing with you, as always. Also, if you want to support me directly, subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, it's linked in the description. Uh, if you do, you'll be able to get shouted out in these videos. So big shout outs to Bren Donker, GMYFS, Rincewind, and Pork Uh, with all your help, uh, you know, it really motivates me to make more of these videos. Also, if you want to play games in this format or any other format that I feature in these videos, uh, definitely check out the YGO from Zero Discord server. Link is in the description down below. But that's going to do it for the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. As always, and until next time, I've been Ben from YGO from Zero, and I'm signing off.